So how do we apply color or other properties to this so far boring looking website? Okay, let's first of all go to our text render page and before moving forward let's fix this mistake. There is a mistake here and it's great to make mistakes in HTML because that's how we learn. So from experience I can tell that there's something wrong in this line because all of this blue should be red. Um, and by looking at it, I realize that it's this double quotation here. From copying and pasting from PowerPoint, this error happened. So I want to replace it with the proper quotation mark and then that blue was, is gone. Okay, so since I have experience in this, I know that the element should be in blue, the attribute should be in red and so on. So my eyes told me that there was an error. If you're using TextMate, you'll get used to it and um, you probably have a black interface and then your element is in purple, your attribute is in green maybe. Um, you get so used to it, you, you start noticing the mistakes. Okay, we fixed that and now we can move forward. So how do we change color since we're going to work with the property of color? We can work with other properties, but let's start um, at the basics. Before starting any of that, let's define what an attribute is. So remember that P is an element, span is an element. What is an attribute? If I go ahead and give the P, I just hit space and I write ID for example, ID is an attribute. If I hit space here, I write class, class is another attribute. So ID and class happen to be two attributes. There are many attributes. Source is an attribute, href is an attribute, and so on. We will look more into attributes when we start with the chapter. But for now, let's look at this example again. So we gave the P, the first P, the ID attribute. We gave the second P, the class attribute. And attributes come in the form of name equal value, which means after I write ID, I should put the equal sign, open and close quotation marks, and then put a value here. What should the value be? Any word of your choice, uh, such as color one. Okay? Um, in web design, when you write syntax, don't use spaces. So avoid using something like this. Color, color space one. Don't do that for names. Okay? So color one... Um, or color big, color small. If you have two words or a word and a number, just don't um, have a space in between. Okay, so we said that the attribute comes in the name of, uh, in the form of name equals value. So let's give class another uh, value, class equals, open and close quotation marks, color two, and so on. Okay, so let's save this. And if we refresh this page, nothing's going to change because we didn't do anything yet. We just gave the two Ps uh, an ID and a class. That's all. And this does nothing yet. Okay. Um, now we start talking about CSS. Let's look at this line. What this line is saying, basically, use the link element to link this index.html file to a file called style1.css and this can be called anything but normally we call it style.css um, and this tells the browser that when it's supposed to load the index.html page it should also look for the file called style1.css in order to apply the styles on anything that's on that index.html page and the styles are written on the style sheet. So let's go ahead and create this file. This is a file. We start a new document and I did that by just doing command N. You can also go to file new and I'm going to basically write my properties now. So here we said P ID equals color 1 and I want to represent this so that I go ahead and color the first phrase with red. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. But before doing that, let me save this file. 
Command S, save this as style1.css. Okay. So, ID color1. The ID attribute in style is represented by a pound sign. So, we type the pound sign. And then we write the value color1. And let me increase the size so that we see better. And then we open close curly braces. And then here, I'm going to say color red. That's it. Let me see if this is going to work. Hit save, go back, and refresh the page. There you go. So the first phrase became red because I used the ID attribute, and I referenced the ID attribute in my style sheet, and the ID attribute is referenced by a pound sign. So I said pound, and then the value of the ID, which is color1, and between curly braces, I typed color red. This term red, you can use, you can say red, yellow, uh, maroon, black, and so forth. Um, or you can go to a hexadecimal chart and pick a value. Let's do that just so you get an idea. If I type in hexadecimal colors, you go to any hexadecimal chart, you click on a chart, and you go ahead and pick a color. So if I want red, instead of saying red, R-E-D, I can type FF four, uh, four zeros. So let me go ahead and do that too, instead of red. So pound sign, FF four zeros. Before any hexadecimal number, we need to insert a pound sign. Hit save and refresh the page. There is a slight change. We hardly see it. It's almost the same thing. Okay. So that's how I went ahead and gave my first phrase the color red. Let me go ahead and color the second phrase a blue color. So how do I reference the class attribute? Let me go to style. I reference the class attribute with a dot. Okay? So remember, I reference the ID attribute with a pound sign, and I reference the class attribute with a dot. So dot color. 2, is that what we named it? Let's see, color 2, space, open, close, curly braces, and then color, we said blue, or we can go to the hexadecimal ch uh, chart again, which I closed, but we can go there again. Blue, let's pick a nice blue, like 66CCFF. Okay, found 66CCFF semicolon, save, and then refresh the page. That's our blue. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, pretty straightforward, very easy. Um, now the question remains, when do we use an ID? When do we use a class? Okay, so let's talk about that next.